Harry Carey and Steve Stone back in Montreal. There's the update. 1-1 Cardinals batting top of the fourth in Pittsburgh. Lee and Bev Donovan of Milwaukee here to cheer for the Cubs. Boy, a lot of Cub fans from all over on hand. Here's Dawson. First pitch high, ball one. Now, Dawson's only hitting 180 against his old teammates, but he's walloped three home runs against them. Nine out of 50. One third of his hits have been home run. Strike call. Looks like Dutch Reynolds calling that inside corner. And the hitters will have to adjust to that. Andre Dawson commenting about this ballpark said it was a great career here, but he feels if he had never left Montreal, his career would be over right now. And he'd have so many knee problems on the artificial surface, he wouldn't be able to play. So he thinks by coming to Wrigley Field, he extended his career. Here's a pitch who fouls it out of play into the stand. One ball, two strikes. John Mellon, Marty Lopez, and a group here from Chicago. They're here from Lake Forest. Pat and Gene Kubiak and Bevan Lee Donovan from Milwaukee, I mentioned before. And they're also here from Whiting, Indiana. George Justak country. Don and Paul Harding hoping to celebrate a Cubs clinch tonight and clinching the Eastern Division. Ball, two strikes. Outside. Two and two. The medical report on Davey Martinez is pretty good. He injured himself last night, falling down a drive that Andre Dawson hit only to see it go for an inside the glove home run. And he doesn't have a broken shoulder. It's just slightly separated around the collarbone. He's going to be in a sling for five days, and he should be okay after that. And that's good news. Two two pitch, and he struck him out. Dawson goes down swinging. That brings up Luis Salazar. Hitting 285 for the year. Five out of 29 against the Expo, which is a 172 average. If that curveball is any indication, Dennis Martinez is going to be a tough customer. That one just fell right off the table, and Andre Dawson had no chance. Cubs just have to hope that Martinez misses with that, because if he gets it over, it's a devastating pitch for him. One out, nobody on. Lauren McNer McKernan from Iowa is here. Lauren McKernan. Friend of Sharon Panazzo's. One out, nobody on. The pitch to Salazar. Look out. George and Perky Lockwood from Bridgewater Corners, Vermont. Die-hard Cub fan. They retired to Vermont from Illinois. And they came to Montreal to see the Cubs clinch it. Two balls, no stress. There's the strike call. Watch the way Dutch rendered. Jenna Fleck before he calls the strike. Two balls and the strike. Luis Salazar. Martinez going to be a tough cookie. So is Maddox. He swung in the middle. You know, Maddox's earned run average is 2.87, 2.82 rather. And Martinez for the year is 3.14. So both pitch good ball against the other team. Each is two and one for the year. Martinez six and two in his lifetime. Maddox six and five in his lifetime. Three balls, two strikes, one up. Ooh, a curveball just missed. He walked it. Salazar gets the first base on ball given up by Dennis Martinez. Harlan and Lois Schmoll from Brandon and Ripon, Wisconsin are here. You see the Cubs win their division. And so's Fred and Doris Goldman from Northbrook, Illinois. 
Salazar doesn't have great speed. This is not a good running situation. And Dunstan's been on the shelf a few days. Let's see if he gets a fastball early in the count to swing at. When Martinez throws his fastball, more times than not, he'll throw it for a strike away. When he comes inside, it's always off the plate. Sean Dunstan hitting 316 against the Expos pitching. Overall, 281. Strike is called. See, like, see that? The way Renner called it. Oh, and won the count. Well, Karen from Chicago wants her parents down in St. Petersburg, Florida, to know she's in Montreal tonight. Watching the Cubs, hoping they clinch it. Lead by Salazar. He started a swing, they're going to appeal. He did not go around. One and one the count. Bull and Mike Kotel from West Palm Beach, Florida are, are on hand. This is a steady infield without great range except in first base. Galarraga's nicknamed the Cat. Hey, Pirates lead two to one to four. It's still batting. One one pitch. Over to first. Dan Michaels from Redford, Michigan is there. And so Bernie Bacalar from Southfield, Michigan. R.J. Reynolds on a ground out. Knocked in Bobby Bonilla with the go-ahead run. Quick throw over the first. That Bonilla, I guess he's hitting just as well against the Cardinals as he always does against the Cubs. Doesn't play any favorite. One ball, one strike. Well, there are four sisters here from Chicago. Drove to Montreal, hoping to be here for the clinching. The pitch swung and he missed. Dorothy from El Toro, California. Beverly from Chesapeake, Virginia. Margie from Lansing, Illinois. Ginny from Fullerton, California. The girls of Zimmer, they say. One ball, two strikes. Did he hold up in time? Yes. Two balls, two strikes. Marquise Grissom taking over in center field for Dave Martinez has made a couple of mistakes. They're not sure if he's adjusted quite yet to center field in the major leagues. He's got very good speed. There's no doubt about that. He throws the ball well. But he's misjudged a couple of balls in his young career. And we'll see if the Cubs can take advantage of that. Two balls, two strikes, one on, one on the throw. He's back. Dave, Valerie, and David Garlic are here from Chicagoland and Indiana Indianapolis with Phoebe Meadows' news travel tour, which includes about 110 people. Two balls, two strikes. A bouncy got a chance to beat it out. They're going to let it roll. It's going to go foul. Smart play by Dennis Martinez. He just started to reach for the ball. I don't know the, whether Santavania yelled at him or whether he summed it up himself that it might go foul. Now he lets it throw. It's really and the only play that he's got. For a while, it looked like it might stay there. But it, it slopes a little bit that way, and it's a foul ball. Dunstan still nursing a sore shoulder, but he felt it was good enough to play. And his first throw tonight, he didn't go all out. So you wonder if he's 100%. And the Cubs still waiting for Jerome Walton to get back in the lineup. He's still on a day-to-day -day basis. There's a bunch throw from DeKalb, Illinois. Eight um, is it eight? 18 hours drive to Montreal. Tony Geem and Mike Brand Brandon and Mike Dun Dunzio. There's a smash to the second baseman. The only play they can get some force out. Dunstan forced Salazar. Foley to Owen. Now you're in a situation where you might want to run with Sean Dunstan. You don't mind if Rona leads off the next inning if they do run with Dunstan. If you leave Dunstan at first base, Rona makes the last out, you lead off with Maddox. And although he's tied for the league lead in hits with 17, you'd rather lead off with Rona. 
two men out. Dunstan, who's swiped 19 bases already. Jerome Walton leads the team. There we go. There's a smash. Fair ball down the left field line. Here's Dunson. He's got a chance to score. He does. It's a double for Rona. He's going to try for three. The, he makes it a triple. Rick Rona was, must have been the hit and run. He tripled down the left field line into the corner. And the Cubs lead one to nothing. RBI number 12 as Rick Rona continues to do the job. He gets a first ball fastball with Dunstan going, and you can see Bob Engel motioning fair. Dunstan with great speed, scores without a play, and then Rona with the play in front of him decides that he can make it. He's got better than average speed for a catcher, and he's in with a triple. And how about that Rick Rona, his first triple of the year in a very big ball game. And his 12th RBI of the year. And Rona has only been the bat. 81 times, 12 RBI, one to nothing, Chicago lead. Here now is Greg Maddox, the pit. Curve ball, a little bit inside. Maddox has had 17 hits. Everybody in that uh, Cub dugout excited about the first round. Maybe they ain't getting any more tonight. Does a slow roller, throw to first. That ends the inning, but the Cubs are out in front. One run on one hit. A triple by Rick Rona. We go to the bottom of the second, one to nothing Cubs. Mechanics need a degree in engineering to repair automobiles. The fact is, Buick Regal was named Easy Maintenance Car of the Year. That can mean less time in the shop, less money out of your pocket. Get the facts. Buick is better. And now, get 2.9% GMAC financing, or depending on the option package you choose, up to $1,500 factory cash back on Buick Regal. But hurry, this offer is for a limited time only. See your Buick dealer today. My athlete's foot kept flaring up. I'd put it out, and it'd just flare up again. Then my doctor told me about Tenactin. It cures recurring athlete's foot. Use it regularly, and it'll keep the fire from coming back. Tenactin puts the fire out for good. Harry Carey back in Montreal. The Cubs are leading one to nothing on Rick Rona's triple down the left field line. The Cardinals are losing two to one. The Pirates still batting in the bottom of the third, so they may make more. Hubie Brooks will lead it off. He's hitting 259. There's a strike right down the middle. Mr. and Mrs. Richard Golden from Calumet City, Illinois, here celebrating the 35th wedding anniversary, hoping to see the Cubs clinch it. Pitch is fouled off. Brooks had a couple of doubles last night and then got hit in the head by Rick Sutcliffe on a breaking ball. He appeared to be okay, but then when he got the third base later in the inning, he was lifted. Apparently no ill effects on one of the seven free agents the Expos will have to deal with at the end of this season. Oh, and two of the count. He had a good cut of the fastball, fouls it back. Well, some Colorado Cup fans are here. Virgil and Kitty Jensen from Loveland, Colorado. Buck, Buck Rogers, Rogers extended, brought back, even though he had a contract. It was up in the air, but happy to see him managing next year. There's a pitch. He struck him out. Strikeout number two. Dramatic. 
going for his 19th win of the year. Last year he won 18. This year he's trying to win 20. He's had a great season. Earn on average 2.97. He really doesn't know why he tired at the end of last year, but he said he feels strong right now. There's a pitch a little bit low and outside. I'd have to say that Greg Maddox will pitch the first game of the playoffs at Rigby Field against the Giants October the 4th, which is a Wednesday night. There's a pitch foul back. In the bottom of the fifth, the Pirates now lead the Cardinals two to one. Mr. and Mrs. Glenn Mizell from Lemoy, Illinois. Here for the clincher. Hopefully. <laughs> Here's the guy writes a note. Well, Here's a pitch. Foul out of play. He says, Dear Harry. My new wife and I, well, that certainly sounds like you had a wife before. Our honeymooning in Montreal, hoping to see the Cubs clinch the division. Debbie and Joe Morey from Lyle, Illinois. There's a pitch a little bit outside. Morey. Lyle. Two balls, two strikes. I got to assume he says my new wife and I are honeymooning. <laughs> Sounds like maybe he shed of his own. Life. Well, that's baseball. Two balls, two strikes. Fouls it out of play. Wallach hitting 282 for the year, 12 homers, 76 RBI. Against Cub pitching, he's hitting 306. It's been a tough year for Wallach as far as the power is concerned. He views himself as an alleys hitter. He's had a ton of doubles this year, but not a whole lot of home runs for him. Here's a pitch outside. Hey, the Bulls' first game of the year on uh, Channel 9, November the 3rd at 7.30. The Bulls versus Cleveland. Another great sports service. Here's a high pop fly. Sandberg is there. He has it. Two men gone. Sandberg going for his 86 straight game. The record is 89. Held by Manny, Manny Trio. He can reach that record if he plays airless ball the rest of the year, and he's going to do it all on the artificial surface where he's especially tough. He's playing very deep for Tom Foley, who was a thorn in the side of the Cubs last night with a couple of hits and a couple of RBIs. Playing back to try to get the angle on the ground ball. Pitch to Foley. A little bit wide. Foley is why they won the ball game last night. He drove in their first two runs, and then he opened up the Tenth inning with a base hit. They came out to do their winning run. That led to their winning run. Foley hitting only 228. But against the Cubs, he's hit 346. There's a hot smash in the right field of base hit. Sandberg could not reach it to his left. Foley proving very troublesome for the Cubs, and it wasn't long ago when he had won the job of starting shortstop in Cincinnati. But when Pete Rose took over in Cincinnati, he put Davey Concepcion back there on a full-time basis. Foley became expendable, made a stop in Philadelphia, now here in Montreal, and he continues to torment the Cubs. I think if I were the Cubs, I'd talk to the other clubs and see how they pitched the Foley. There's quite a variance. Between hitting 346 against the Cubs, more now, two of his seven home runs also have been against the Cubs, while hitting only 228 against the whole league. Here's Santovania, hitting 247 for the year. 
One ball, no strikes. He's hitting only 172 uh, with a home run against the Cubs. Early in the year, when the Cubs were talking trade with Montreal, one of the names that came up was Tom Foley. But they wanted to give the Cubs Luis Rivera and pulled the name of Foley back off the table. Good. That's a foul ball outside third base. One ball, one strike. Steve Seberg and Jerry Goose, GUSE, from Marengo, Illinois, here to see the Cubs wrap up the Eastern Division title tonight. Fred Van Reet from Arlington Heights flew up here to hopefully see the clincher today. There's a drive in the center field, a base hit. Runners are going to go to, from first to third. Runners in first and third with two out. And Santovania singles the center. Foley racing around the third base. And that brings up Spike Owen. Santovania has all kinds of talent, but they haven't gotten the best out of him yet. They keep expecting him to take over and be their everyday catcher, but so far, Mike Fitzgerald is splitting the duties. They expect Santovania to come back next year and fulfill all the promise that Buck Rogers, who is a former catcher, thinks Santovania has in him. Spike Owen hitting 238, six homers, 41 RBI. He follows the first pitch back. Owens uh, is only hitting 140 against the Cubs pitching staff. Only seven hits and 50 times at bat. To pass along best wishes and a speedy recovery to Perry Wall and Miko Hobart at the University of Iowa Hospital. Owen oh, one to count, two out, two on, one to nothing Cubs. A little bit. Of, hey, a cut the inside corner. Owen oh, two. Dutch Spike Reynolds Owen. didn't like that call. Dutch Reynolds will scream out the call right away, but it takes him some time to then turn around and signal it. Looks, Looks like, like it had the good. inside corner, and Maddox's fastball tails over the inside corner when he throws it at the left-hand hitter. And it fools him a lot of times. 0-2 oh, the count. Check him out! Again, he caught that inside corner. Spike Owen is out on strike. Two men are left on base. At the end of two, the Cubs lead one to nothing. Carry and Steve Stone as we go into the top of the third. Marvell Wynn will lead it off. Looking for his first hit in this series. They stopped him 0 for 5 last night. He rolled out his first time up tonight. Barbara Fold, his nephew Matthew Erickson's watching in Dayton, Ohio. She's from Foley, Alabama, watching the ball game. Here in Montreal. There is Pascal Perez. Marvell Wynn. A little bit inside. One ball, no strikes. Jim Donald, head of Continental Broadcasting. On hand, hoping to see the clincher. There's a pitch over the inside corner, strike call. Some of the other executives will try to get a list of them. One ball, one strike. Mike Bilecki will be looking for number 18 tomorrow night against Pasquale Perez. 1-1 one, one pitch. Bouncing ball to Wallach. That ought to be easy, and it is. Pitch showed you if you have good enough rotation on your curveball, even when you throw a high curve, hitter still beats it into the dirt. That pitch was up in the eyes of Marvell Wynn. The Coneheads. The Bagheads. <laughs> They're the Mon Are they Montreal fans? They must be. They're starting a very small wave right now. Hey, they might look better with that uh, contraption on their face and they do our narrowly. Here's a curved strike call. 
Sander bounced out his first time. Pittsburgh is leading 2-1 to one in the top of the fifth over the Cardinals in Pittsburgh. Well, just think. Everybody in April was hopeful. They're all fallen by the wayside with the exception of the Cardinals, who are almost dead, and the Cubs. a high fly ball Hubie Brooks will make the catch he does Dennis Martinez resurrected his career he was traded over here and they didn't think too highly of him so much so that they allowed him to go into the free agent market he had no takers in the free agent market despite the fact that he threw the ball very well for Montreal he came back and now he's established himself as one of the premier pitchers in the National League yeah. Yeah. Boy, what a difference a year makes. Last year, the Cubs finished with 77 victories. Tonight, they're shooting for their 90th. Dwight Smith was single his first time. Oh, and one the count, two out, one to nothing cup. Fouls out of play. Outside third base. Mike Badlecki, you see him in the fr front there. There's uh, Les Lancaster. Vance Law going down the line. There's Greg Smith, rookie infielder. David Barrio, Jeff Pico, Sean Dunstan, Joe Girardi. There's Sandberg. See him all later. Smith strikes out. One, two, three. We go on the bottom of the third. One to nothing in favor of the Cubs. Have a ball. Play the lottery. Then find out if you're a winner by tuning to Chicago's very own Channel 9 tonight and every night at 6.57 p.m. things that feel good about around here, and we're happy to be one of them. Bank at the LaSalle Banks, and smile all the way to the bank. She's a long one. So long, she got a clock in the front and back seat. Why's that? Different time zones, you get it? <laughs> right. 76 unleaded super, huh? Is that a big deal? Yep, it's our highest octane unleaded. Hog ties them knocks and things, huh? Yeah, it helps uh, clean your port fuel injectors. Uh, check your water and oil. The water's okay. Uh, how's oil, hon? Down a court, JT. Down a court, JT. <laughs> <laughs> Go with the spirit of 76. Presenting the amazing slice. It quenches, it drenches, it gratifies and satisfies. What would you pay for this crystal clear wonder? Order now and receive at no extra cost this incredible metallic container with the official slice emblem. You'll also get this handsome state-of-the-art opener. Put that checkbook away, there's more. Buy six cans of slice and receive this spectacular streamlined carrying case. That's six metallic containers with emblems. Six handsome state-of-the-art openers and the lovely carrying case. Now, what would you pay? $50? Guess again, $40. $39.85. dollars Slice, clearly the one. What's on sale at Builder Square? Phew, what isn't? Harry Carey back to the ballpark. Kevin Gross, right-handed pitcher of the Expos. You're looking at him there a moment ago. Here's Dennis Martinez. Nine out of 70 for the year. There's ground ball right to Dunstan. He's got it. Throws them out on the way. Here's Tim Raines. He tapped out his first time. Tim Raines and Andre Dawson talking with one another before the game, reminiscing some old times. They're still the best of friends. Andre apparently likes to come back and hit in this ballpark, although he hasn't had a great deal of success. He has at hitting the ball out of the park here. One out, nobody on. One to nothing in favor of the Cubs. Cardinals are losing two to one in the fifth in Pittsburgh. There's a line drive in the left field. It's a base hit. There goes Reeves on his way to second base. A double for Reeves. He swung. 
swung the first pitch his first time, and he swung the first pitch this time. But this time he gets a double. Double number 29 for Tim Raines. He's got great speed. The only mystery is why he doesn't show it in the stolen base department. He's got 39 this year, but here's a man capable of stealing 80. And Maddox will have to keep a close eye on him at second base. One out, one on. And here's Marquise Grissom, the 22-year-old rookie. Bounced out his first time up. Maddox. Delivered. Third, low and outside. The three names always mentioned when everybody talks to Montreal in a trade is Marquise Grissom, the Lino De Shields, and Larry Walker. So far, Dave Dombrowski has not parted with any of these three guys. He thinks they're the future of this ball club. Cardinals now batting the six, trailing two to one. Pitch a little bit outside, apparently. Oh, they appeal and they call it a strike. That evens it up. A ball and a strike, one out, one on. Toronto leading it to try two to nothing. The Milwaukee game at Baltimore just starting. Only one game separates Toronto and Detroit, the Toronto leading. There's a high fly ball will be caught. And Reigns is not going anywhere. He knows his old buddy's got a shotgun of an arm. Grissom flat out to Dawson. And brings him Andre Galarraga. He wants him to go. Andre said, why don't you challenge me? Tim Rain said, I've seen you throw too many times, big guy. I'm not going to get cut down to end the inning. Cardinals didn't do anything in the sixth. The Pirates lead two to one. There's Galarraga. He has a phone contact with Pittsburgh. We'll know if everything that happens there. Nice save by Rick Rona. Well, I tell you, I, I don't know how you can decide between Rona and Girardi. They both have done such a wonderful job. And of course, <laughs> the catcher is considered number one is a boy who was hurt on the disabled list, Damon Berryhill. So there's three excellent young catchers. One ball, no strikes, two out. There goes Reigns. There's a peg. Hey, nobody covered. Uh, Saddle, Reigns beats Salazar to the bag. It's a good thing Ronan throw went right to where Salazar was standing. Stolen base number 40, and Luis Salazar just falls asleep. He doesn't break. And Reigns steals it almost uncontested. Well, they wouldn't have thrown him out anyway. He had a great jump. Two balls, no strikes. 40 stolen bases for Tim Rain. Sounds like a lot, but for him, it's nothing. Oh, he swings and he misses. Two balls and a strike. If he's going to go into Galarraga, he's got to go way in. You can get him out in there. The bat isn't quite as fast as it was early in the year. And Maddox has thrown five wild pitches. Rona's going to have to be on his toes. Two balls and a strike. He swings and he fouls it off. Two and two. Galarraga. Hitting only 219 against the Cubs pitching staff this year. The RBI is respectable. Last year he only had 92, despite the fact he hit 302. This year the batting average in the 250s. But he's within range with 84 RBIs. Maddox would like to keep it at that 84 mark. Two and two. Hey, struck him out. And no runs, one hit, one left. Dwayne will be coming along in a moment. This is Harry Carey in Montreal, where at the end of three, the Cubs are out in front, one to nothing. <laughs> 